And then, um, well, to get started here, I, there's, you know, questions that I get because working as a realtor, I get a lot of questions that people direct towards me that are more lender questions. And so I kind of want to just take this this time that we have and just kind of, you know, the questions that I get, you know, it's I always direct people back to the lender because it's better to get the answer, you know, directly from the source. Um, so one of the things that people kind of ask me a lot is, um, you know, what is the loan process? What does that look like? You know, what type of documents do I have to have? What time frame do I have to have? How long does it take? You know, how 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 deep into my business are you going to get as a lender? So if you, <laughs> you want to kind of touch on those things and just just kind of educate some people there. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so the loan process, I always, I always tell everybody it's kind of very heavy in the very beginning, even before you go under contract, because what I want to do is make sure that if you're going to write a contract that I don't have to come back to you later on in the process and go, whoops, we missed something. Sorry. I know you wrote a contract and you want to buy this house, but now you can't close on it. You don't qualify. Right. So I always kind of try and set expectations with my borrowers, you know, because a lot of times, you know, you hear things, oh, I got, you know, I went online and I got pre-approved. Right. And they think it happens in, you know, 10 seconds and, mm -hmm. it, and it can. Right. If you go online and apply right. to one of those lenders. Right. But um, because, again, it's a very relationship driven process. Um, you know, I really want to make sure that we make things right for everybody. Like, it's not just a quick, I mean, this is a really big financial decision. Mm -hmm. So it's not something to jump right into. Um, so with the loan process in the very beginning, before they even go look at any properties, right, we want to make sure that they're pre-approved and good to go. So we really, we do dig deep. Um, you know, we're going to get into a lot of the different financial things, but there's a lot of stuff in there too that we can also help with, you know, if they need it. Um, so for the loan process, basically, I have a quick little maybe 15 minute conversation with my borrower and I just kind of go over some of the little like some of the sticking points and things that have come up that have made people not qualify. So I want to ask those questions, you know, because if I get that up front, then we can figure out how to solve it. And again, I don't want it coming out like down the road, you know, once we're yeah, under contract. So, I, I don't I don't want that either. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody does. I, it's not I, a good conversation for anybody. <laughs> I do not want to be that lender that calls and says, oh, you know, uh, sorry, we missed something. So so we go over a lot of the details. Um, and then I have them uh, I have the borrowers fill out um, a loan application online where they can put in all their you know more specific details. Then we uh, pull credit and then they also have to upload their documents to the borrower portal that we have. So um, I know we'll talk about credit in a little bit, um, but we're going to pull credit. We'll help the borrowers, you know, if there's things that we need to work on there. Um, as far as the loan documents. Um, it's usually pretty easy peasy on that. Um, we're going to need most recent pay stubs, the two most recent bank statements. Uh, and we only want to see bank statements where the where the money is being held. We don't want to see extra bank statements because sometimes that just opens up a can of worms for the underwriters if they start, you know, seeing transactions in there. So I always advise everybody, you know, even if they could like ahead of time and maybe we need to put this out there a little more often, like um, set up a separate bank account for your down payment and your closing costs and just have the money sitting in there. That way That's there's not idea. all these transactions going in and out that the underwriter's like, well, what's this for? And what's that for? And why did you deposit a million dollars into your account the other day? You know, where did that come where from? Where did that come right? from? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, so bank statements, uh, the pay stubs, uh, two most recent W-2s, um, the underwriting systems really liking um, retirement accounts being added to the files um, just because it gives the file more security, um, more credentials if we have it. So I've seen, I'm actually running one this morning where the borrower wasn't qualifying and everything looked fine. I'm like, what is wrong with this scenario? What's going on? And the minute I added the 401k to her scenario, it gave me an approval. So even though the down payment money is not coming from there, the underwriter still likes to see that? They like to know that borrowers have money in reserves. So, okay. you know, and I, I try not to ask for too much documentation because I try to make it as simple as possible for the borrowers. But we really need to start adding that in a lot more because that's what the system is liking right now. Okay. Yeah. So it's almost, it's a computer that actually gives us the approval first. And as long as the approval comes in, then we get into the underwriting where the underwriter starts looking at a few more details and that's when they ask for a few more things. So um, now if they, um, if they own a rental property 
or if they're self-employed, then that's when we're going to start getting into tax returns. But otherwise, it's just bank statements, W-2s, pay stubs, their driver's license. And that's pretty much about it, you know, unless you have those other things and we have to dig a little deeper into tax returns. Okay, so if they're, if they're self-employed or something like that, then you have to start getting into more tax returns and a little bit more information. Now, as far as what what's approximately, and, and I'm sure it's going to differ from different people, but approximately from the time that they submit their information, how soon would they be able to know what they're pre-qualified for? Mm -hmm. So it, again, it all depends on the borrower. Um, a lot of it depends on how they get paid. So, um, I mean, it could technically be done in about an hour, you know, by the time we look at their loan documents, you know, if they've uploaded everything that we need, we review loan documents, we pull in credit, and we work the numbers about an hour or so. Um, so within the day, you know, I don't okay. really put pressure on everybody, you know, oh, <laughs> probably, you know? Um, but, you know, it was the same day, usually um, the sticking points that we do have are um, the pay stubs, because right now, if somebody is a variable income borrower, there's a lot that we have to look into with that because um you know underwriting is going to want to see a two-year history of what the hours are so if you work you know 25 hours and then 32 hours and then 41 hours and you know different hours like that we need to get a two-year average on it so it's not like a real simple process um okay. so those take a little bit longer to to calculate and do and, and get proof of it sometimes we have to contact employers you know for their uh, past pay stubs or verification of employment but yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then, so if somebody, those other variables, like I say, if somebody's self-employed or maybe they're commission-based, where their pay kind of fluctuates from month to month, they're not just, hey, I'm straight salary, I get X amount every two weeks or every month or however they get paid. I'm sure that that makes it simpler if it's something like that. But if you've got somebody where part of their income is commission-based or if they're self-employed. Uh, then you've got a few more variables that you guys have to look at. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And just kind of on that note, um, with the self-employed borrowers, I mean, the one thing that we have to educate them on is, you know, it's great to want to write off a lot of things on your taxes, but what they need to understand is if they make a hundred thousand dollars, write mm -hmm. off $80,000, <laughs> they only make, make on paper $20,000. And so that's the only income we can use is what's down at the very bottom, right? Because okay. that's what that's what they're paying their taxes on, and that's what they're reporting. So you know, we it, it's it's very hard for them to understand, right? Because they're like, well, I make a hundred thousand dollars, I have money in the bank, I can pay all my bills, which mm -hmm. is awesome. But the underwriters want to see what your net profit is at the very bottom. So we gotta. You know, if you're thinking about buying a home in the next two years and you're self-employed or 1099 income and you're writing a lot of things off, unfortunately, you just have to kind of, you know, not write a lot of things off and show that income. And then after that, you know, then you're good to go to however you want to write it off, you know, but right, we really right. need to see the income. And I, I, I just feel like they don't know that ahead of time, you know, so if we can kind of get the word out about that, too, you know, we got to help those the self-employed borrowers. So, okay, 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 that makes sense. That makes sense. So, basically, what it sounds like is if somebody's thinking about buying a house, they really they shouldn't wait until they want to go out and start shopping. They really should get in touch with with you in advance so that they can have these conversations with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Um. You know, and the other big thing is um, pulling credit, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, you know, there's things that come up that the borrowers aren't aware of, and if it's something that we can fix for them. Um, then we definitely want to work on that, you know, ahead of time because the credit score is going to make or break a deal, you know, so we want to make sure that that's, that that's good to go. Um, so if we do all this stuff ahead of time in the very beginning, you know, even like if um, a borrower has child support and they say they, you know, get $500 a month for that, we, we need to see the child support documents because we got to check things there like how old are the children because you have to have a three-year continuance. So if your child is 16 years old, your child's going to be 18 in two years, not three years. And so we can't use it. So, you know, a lot of oh. borrowers, when they fill out the loan out, they'll say that they have this extra income. So that's another document we get ahead of time because we want to see, because I don't want to go on the basis of, okay, this is all the income that they have. And then again, get under contract. And then I see the child support documentation and I'm like, whoops, you know, this child's going to be 18 in two years. So 
And then we got to take that income off of there, you know? Um, mm. So those are some of the things that kind of come up that, you know, I know it seems like a lot in the very beginning, but the cool thing is, you know, we get all these things out of the way. We've reviewed everything. So your pre-approval from us is like, pretty much you're good to go, right? So then you're just going out shopping, you look for the contract or get the contract written. And then once you have the contract, then there's not too many more things we need, just maybe some updated pay stubs, updated bank statements, couple little things, you know, the underwriting might ask for. So it's, you know, I feel pretty confident when I give out a pre-approval and I want you to go out shopping knowing that you're good to go. You know, I don't want you worrying kind of thing, so. Okay, okay, so it sounds like just do, Doing your preparation up front, getting getting out there in advance and having a conversation with you and hey, this is what I need you to do. This is what you need to get together and, and so we're ready. And then if there's any hiccups in there, you can help them through it. Then we can get you pre-approved. Then we can go out and start shopping. Right. It's, it's exactly. not a matter of, hey, I found this house I really like. Let me go get pre-approved and, and get an offer in. So. Oh, that happens too. And we can make you Oh, know. I know. I know. <laughs> That happens too, which is, which is fine. But but you know the heartbreak of it all is you know I have had that happen, and you know there's something that comes up and it's just not doable, you know. But if we had talked about it in the beginning, you know we could have worked on it ahead of time. Um, so you know we we do whatever we can to still make it happen, you know.